Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to this new section. Now we are into a position that we have a lot of knowledge and we can potentially build a complete API. Now we're going to take uh, some of the liberties in this section and some of the precautions we are going to still take because we are not at a pro level. But once you are finished with this section, we will be a much higher ground. And, in, and remember, just like you have enjoyed all the sections uh, before this, you will be enjoying this one as well. So what we're gonna do, in this section, we are going to build a complete API, but we are not yet going to inject database. That section is the next one, so please don't skip this one. Uh, this is not a good thing, okay. So a couple of liberties we are going to take in this one. We are not going to break down. Uh, there are situation in this uh, building of the API that you might want to break some of the code and want to put that into separate file. No, that's not going to come in this section. That's going to come in the next section. We're going to still work on just one file so that we have everything at one place. We can visualize everything that how this is happening and all the things. And in the next section, I'll walk you through that how to structure your uh, project in an easier manner and definitely in the part. So that is going to come up in the next one. Now, apart from this, working with the database, I personally found is much more easier because database gives you so much of amazing features and uh, some of the easy way to work around. For example, there are ways to search into the things, update the thing. You just have to say, especially in the MongoDB, uh, find by ID and update and just pass on the value. It, it does a lot of heavy lifting for you. We sadly don't have that much because we'll be working with just an array or you can say a slice and we have to take care of the things a little bit different way. So that's all what we'll be taking up. And of course, we'll be using the Gorilla Mux package for handling all of the routing. Not that this is the only way to work with. There are definitely other routers and other frameworks which are much more popular or equally popular than Gorilla Mux. But this is a kind of industry de facto, so I wanted to give you a brush up basics on this one first. So let's go ahead and this one is going to be a little bit of a longer section, but I promise you this is going to be so much of fun and you will understand a much more clarity of how APIs are being built in the Golang. Let's go ahead and get started with that. So again, I will be referring some of the documentation from the past examples of Gorilla Mux so in case you have missed that in the last section, please go ahead and do that. And especially the longer video, the mod, I do understand that's a long one. Let's go ahead and create the new folder, 24, and we're gonna call this one as build API. Sounds a reasonable name. And inside this, we are going to get a new file. Let's call this one as main.go. And we'll keep everything up here, but still I'll mark that as a comment section uh, so that you get an idea that which file should be separated out. And we'll do that separation in the next video, uh, of course. So let's go ahead and say go mod init. And now that we are aware of how this actually works after that really long video, we're going to go ahead and say, hey, this one is going to go like this and we're going to call this one as build API. Okay, there we go, nice and easy. So hopefully uh, this is has created all the possible mods and stuff for us. Let's go back and uh, right now just inject this module up here, which is Gorilla Mux. Ah, there's a nice button. And we are going to go ahead and just paste this out. And hopefully this will bring up uh, Gorilla Mux. And since this was already in my cache, it didn't take that long. It just looked in at the cache that, hey, that's the recent version and just pulled it up. So I told you this is like super easy to work on with that. Uh, so there we go. So we have all the Gorilla Mux and stuff going up nicely. Let's go into main.go and we can close this one. Now we won't be saving this file that much often because saving actually just uh, injects the lexer in and sometimes it creates some issues. So we will be saving it less. So how we're gonna go with that first is, uh, let me tell you the action plan that what we're gonna take first, let's define this function and main and a whole lot of that. Okay, so here's the action plan. We want to create a kind of a learn code online, uh, similar kind of a looking backend API. We'll be working with the courses. So we want to give a feature that user can actually uh, get all the courses. They are able to create new courses, delete the courses, and update the existing courses. Now update is not really the fun part to work without the database, but we'll, we'll figure out a way. Also, I want to see that if there is no unique ID or no uh, title or the name being given to a course, then the course should not be added. So we need to create kind of a helper method for doing so, and that's pretty much it. For having all of this data, we'll be using a slice as our fake database, uh, since we don't have database in this section. So that's it, that's all the action plan. And further down the road, we are going to inject Gorilla Mux so that every single route is being handled by a separate method for all the CRUD operation, uh, create, read, update, delete, and a whole bunch of other things. And I'll give you some assignments as well in this one. Okay, so that's the action plan. 
Now the first thing that we have to do up here is to define that uh, since I'm creating a database, kind of a similar syntax, we need to define that how our course is going to look like. So obvious thing is create a model for that. So this is how we go ahead and create a model. So model for courses or course. And this usually go into file. So whenever I say dash file, that means, yeah, this is supposed to go in a file, but we are not putting it file in the file as of now. Surely we'll do that later on. So to create that, it's really simple. I'm going to go ahead and say course because probably later on I want to export that. So capital C is kind of a nice one here. And we're going to go ahead and say struct and just like this. What we're going to put inside that is definitely up to you, but this is all what we got. Now in some of the cases, in fact, majority of the cases, you'll be having multiple models and these models sometimes interact with each other as well. So that is also the case. So for example, if I go ahead and say that the course is going to have an author as well and probably many other as well, and we want to inject that as well. Now this is going to be a simple one. Let's just say this is the author. So we want to have just two properties if that in here so we're going to say hey course author is going to have a full name which is of and again my bad I almost forgot that I need to keep that as full name just like this so that I can export this method and this will be of type string and since I know very well that this is going to be exported as JSON or will be accepted as JSON so let's go ahead and work on with JSON just right up here and we're going to call this one as uh, full name because in the APIs or in the JSON format I can use the lowercase up here now, apart from this, uh, authors also love to display their website whenever they have this. So we're going to call this one as string and we'll have a JSON and this one like that. And we're going to call all as lowercase. It's a good practice to have everything as lowercase. And by the way, we will be skipping up some of the best practices of building the APIs. Uh, so I'll, I'll also mention that when we go through on that part. Okay. Now how we're going to define the courses? Now every single course is going to have a course ID. So let's go ahead and say this is going to be my course ID. This will be of type string. But when it comes up to the JSON part, I don't want to call it as with the uppercase and lowercase and all of that. I want to call all lowercase as course ID. Make sense? And then we are going to have uh, the course IDs there. Then the course name should be there. So course name and that is going to be a string. And let's go ahead and inject JSON just like this. And we're going to call this one as course name. Course should have a price also. So we're going to call this one as course price. Price. And this will be a type of string, not string actually. It should be more over float, but we're going to go through with the string uh, or just integer in this case. And then we're going to just go ahead and say in the JSON, I want to call this one as just price because it's much more easier. And uh, the course name is there, price is there, ID is there, and we also also inject this author field up here. So how we're gonna do that, we're gonna say that you're going to have an author. The author is not going to be a type of string or integer, but my own custom type. What do I mean by custom type? This is where I have defined the custom type. So I can go ahead and say, hey, uh, just go ahead and take an author. If I go ahead and say this one, uh, surely this is going to work, but again, we get into the concept of copying the value, so we don't want to do that. We want to pass on a reference of that. I, I cannot pass on a reference of this because this hasn't yet created. So we're going to go ahead and mark it as a type of pointer. Remember, this is where I'm not actually referencing the variables directly. I'm just defining the types here, like string and integer. So type is a pointer, so author pointer. You get the idea. And then we're going to go ahead and say, hey, you will be of type JSON. And this is what we're going to call this one as author, all lowercase. Save this. And there we go. Your database or your models are all good. Now, usually this goes in a separate file and this goes in a separate file. But I'm assuming that this all is going in a one separate file. We'll work on that in, in the next uh, section up here. Now, we have a little bit more time. The video is not yet long. Let's go ahead and create a fake DB. Now, how the fake DB is going to go ahead and look like, we're going to go ahead and call this one as courses, as fake DB. This is going to be a slice of type course, if I can write that. Okay, there we go. So this is all great so far. And just one more thing we're going to do in this video is, there are usually some helper methods in these uh, kind of situation that helps you to perform some task. Maybe you want to encrypt the password. Maybe you want to not allow users to pull in the data in the database without a unique course ID or the course name. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's call this one as 
These are sometimes called as middleware and some people call them as helper as well. Again, there are different concepts of middleware and helper, but in this case, we can actually exchange the name. And these usually go inside a separate file. I want to have a simple method in this case. Let's go ahead and say function. And then this method is, is uh, called as is empty, basically. There we go. Now what it does, it just returns you a bool value that whether you should be moving further or not. And since this method is going to be a part of structure, so obviously you need to pass on that structure up here. So let's go ahead and call this, I'm passing you courses, uh, which will be a pointer of course, a type of course, so there we go. Again, this course is exactly this one. So as you pass on me this value C up here, which is a course, I get access to all of this value. And I want to check just two things that uh, this should not be empty and this should not be empty. So that's basically it. And again, there are better ways of doing it. Just wanted to show you, yeah, that is also a possibility. So we're going to go ahead and directly return that based on if this course has this uh, auth course ID, if that is equals to empty, and we are going to go ahead and say that this course is also going to have, and again, forgot to use end, there we go. Course is going to have a course name if that is equals to empty, there we go, and that's it. So what we are saying that is empty returns a true value if this is empty and this is empty. Remember, I'm not using a or here because I don't want to proceed if any one of them is empty. I want to only proceed if both of them are filled. Field are filled up, so there we go. So there we go, I told you it's not really that much stuff. So far we have worked on to a great scale here. And now in the next video, we are going to go through and work on that how we handle these, all of this data in a model onto different routes, basically the CRUD features. So quite a long video, let's go ahead and catch up in the next one.